in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed if a meeting is certainly God ordained, there must be transformation and that by the word of God. Number three, in every God ordained meeting, there must be the move of the spirit to heal, to deliver and to bring supernatural solutions to God's people. Healing and deliverance is not the only thing God's people need. They need supernatural solutions, solutions that answer to the real issues that plague their lives many people may not realize the kinds of sacrifice that god's people make in the midst of their pain financial issues health issues demonic oppression issues with career and when they come to jesus there must be an opportunity for him by his spirit to show up and provide supernatural solutions hallelujah Number four, there must be impartation. Impartation, the transference, activations and transference of graces. Hallelujah. Because one of the many things that the Spirit of God seeks to achieve in conferences like this, that is why he allows for the convergence of several people carrying several graces, is that these dimensions be distributed across his body so that people who came here without certain possibilities working in their lives can access the grace dimensions of those possibilities that they desire. This is true. And finally, there must be an opportunity for fellowship. Fellowship. According to Psalm 133, Behold how good and pleasant it is, the Bible says, when brethren dwell together in unity, it likens it to the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron the priest, down to his bed, to his garment, to his skirt. He says, for there, in that state, not just the place, in that state, God hath commanded the blessing, even life forevermore hallelujah and we thank God because these are the things that we've been experiencing in this place and I respect the fact that supremacy has been given to the Word of God the sound communication of God's Word to build our hearts I just want to charge our hearts um, our time is fast spent I don't intend to keep us longer than the time allotted the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13 he says we are the salt of the earth Jesus is teaching now and he began to teach the disciples and he said ye are the salt of the earth he says but if the salt has lost its sever its saltiness he says wherewith shall it be salted it is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot by men then he says, next verse, that ye are the light of the world. He calls you a city that is set on a hill and by reason of that position, it cannot be hidden. Then he says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick or a lampstand. And the Bible says, it giveth light to how many? If you are light, you give light to how many? not to some it giveth light if you are light indeed your relevance should cut across systems structures religion it says if you are light your light gives illumination to all not some not some that was the true light that lighted every man that was the true light there are false lights they carry a semblance of liberty 
but he says that was the true light that lighted every man then he leaves us with a final charge verse 16 he says if it is true that you are that light he says let your light the word let is the word permit allow allow that light to so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and as a result glorify your father in heaven we began our discussion talking about the king and his desire I'm not going into all of that but then I did tell you that when you meet the king you are always left with a mandate that you have an obligation to the king remember that your obligation to the king is your loyalty your surrenderedness and then your obedience this is your obligation to the king if at any point in your kingdom adventure you are found wanting in this tripartite requirements you are not faithful your faithfulness is measured by the degree of your loyalty your degree of surrenderedness and then your degree of obedience to the king but when you encounter the king he now leaves you with a mandate that mandate is to become an extension of himself to your world now he calls you light the same thing God is called God is light Jesus was called the light of the world and he calls us light and then he says we are salt you see salt has two principal assignments as we know number one is for value to add taste number two is for preservation are we together now it is it's amazing that when you cook it is never too late to add salt there are ingredients that when you don't add at a certain time that meal cannot be the meal you intended is that true but even if you make a mistake and forget salt even at the table there is still an opportunity to add it there and it will not look like you ever made a mistake this is the description of you that means you are never a disadvantage to any system it does not matter the time of arrival provided you show up in that system there must be a space for your relevance he calls you salt that you add value to any system are we together that means the next time you find yourself in your place of work do not think your technical skills are the only thing you are bringing no you will be mistaken a thousand times you are like the ark of god in the house of women edom beyond the technical skills you are providing you bring your chiefest value is the presence of god in that corporation are we together now yes so you are the salt of the earth it says but it is your responsibility to keep your saltiness alive so that when you are in the place they can feel your saltiness indeed the power to preserve from decadence and then the power to add taste then he says you are the light of the world he likens you to a city that is set on a hill and by reason of that it cannot be hidden that means visibility is every believer's heritage in christ visibility and influence is not it's not something for a few people are we together now it is God's it is God's desire the king's desire for everyone to be elevated to a position where you can attract the attention of all and sundry that they can learn God through your life and through the excellency of the results that you command you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden then he uses another example he says neither do men light a lamp he never said neither do men put a lamp if the lamp is not lit it doesn't carry any value but once fire comes upon that lamp he says you cannot hide it again but it should be lifted and put in a position where it supplies light to everyone in the room listen to me ladies and gentlemen when the king sends you to represent him his reputation is invested upon you that means when you live a life that does not bear fruit when you live a life that does not produce results it's an indictment on the integrity of the one who sent you he said when i sent you lackest thou anything and they said nothing 
there are many people who claim to be sent by Jesus I'm not just talking in ministry the average believer from a kingdom dimension believes he's an advocate not just of righteousness but of the kingdom and that is true the Bible says so the Bible calls us ambassadors and in the verse we just read it calls us salt it calls us light in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 it calls us witnesses if it is true that we are light we are salt we are ambassadors we are witnesses then it means that the reputation of the king must have been invested in my life and your life it means we do not just come to Pharaoh and tell him I met the God of the Hebrews and he said let my people go Pharaoh will not let the people go because of that grammar you must bring before you a testament that shows you really met the king are we together this is why results are very powerful they are very powerful because they they give credence to the fact that you were truly sent by God are we together now Paul a man approved of God there are corresponding apostolic signs many believers do not know why we don't command the kind of kingdom influence now in leadership and, and thank God for the kind of church that I'm ministering in you're not ignorant in this area at all but in leadership we teach that there are several cadres as far as influence is concerned and there is a cadre in leadership where the influence that you exert upon people is at the instance of the excellency of the results that you command are we together now yes there are dimensions of the influence that comes because of the title the office that you hold so people do not respect you just because they love you they honor the office that you occupy then there is a dimension of leadership that is because of the excellency of your character are we together now they love you because of a disposition of moral excellence but there is a dimension of influence and leadership that happens at the instance of results that when you are bankrupt of results and you cannot lead that organization to provide provable results nobody's going to be loyal to you this is the kind of world we have found ourselves so it's not enough to say Jesus heals, Jesus saves, Jesus lifts. He has sent me. He said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The word blessed means empowered to produce results. So when you say, I come in the name of the Lord, people don't just say, amen, you are welcome. They watch for the signs, authenticity. When you buy a product that claims it came from a company, there are certain seals and certain codes around that product. Is that true? That helps you to distinguish the real from the fake say perhaps it's a toothpaste they will even advertise that when you buy toothpaste from us check you will see something maybe a, a silver label or something like that so when you say you have been sent from God there must be attesting signs and tonight this meeting is not just a miracle service to heal and pray for the sick but it's largely an impartation service that for God's sake something will rest upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ shouting and saying i'm from god is not how it is done your results are evangelists hear me there is a sermon only your results can preach you are not the only one who was supposed to be an evangelist your results are also evangelists and there is an audience that only your results can preach to if you are the only one doing the evangelism yourself and your results are silent you are not preaching well both you and your results should preach. When Moses came and met Pharaoh, he spoke once and the rods continued to speak him. Are we together? Yes. This, this is the same strategy that the secular world has used to enslave believers. They don't talk so loud, but my goodness, their results are ever speaking from one dimension and one level of success we criticize them but we are still slaves to them are we together yes let me show you a few scriptures in matthew chapter 8 from verse 23 to 27 
I want to show you the kind, the portrait of what God desires for you to become. If it is true that you are one with Christ and if it is true that you are sent as an ambassador by the king. Matthew 8, we'll begin our reading from verse 23. The Bible says, and when he, the he being Jesus, was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. 24, reading to 27. And behold, the Bible says, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. 25. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? I love Jesus. And then he arose. This is what it means to be light. This is what it means to be salt. It's not to join in the lamentation. When those who are not light are afraid and confused, they run to you. And when they run to you, it, it takes more than sympathy. Jesus encouraged them, but he turned. And the Bible says he rebuked the winds and the sea. Help me. And there was great results. And there was great results. You can call it anything. But the fact that he took action and there was results that the disciples could see. The next verse, please. The Bible says, but the men marveled, saying, what manner of pastor is this? What manner of businessman is this? What manner of entrepreneur is this? We've seen other kinds, but what manner of man is this? That even the business world obey him. What manner of preacher is this? That you can compel resources, you can compel men that should be saved. Obedience is what made them to marvel. The moment you are truly obedient to the king, everything the king created must be obedience to you. Listen carefully. Your obedience, the, the, the authority and the dominion you command is not just an arbitrary dominion. It's a, it's a reflection principle. The degree to which you are loyal to the king, you are surrendered to the king, you are obedient to the king, that is the same decree to which creation is compelled to be obedient to you. When Jesus came, he so lavishly acknowledged the Father. Even though he was equal with God, he brought himself so low and acknowledged the Father and attested to the fact that he could do nothing without the assistance and the leadership of the Father. Now we see Jesus commanding the winds, commanding the waves. And the Bible says they obeyed him and the people marveled. We understand men obey you, but the wind and the sea, inanimate things, finances obeying you, the territory obeying you, the earth obeying you. Are we together? The Bible says they marveled. And that should be your testimony. That people will say we've employed people in this company, but from the day we brought this person, we cannot describe your technical skill is there, but it looks like there is something else you have brought to this corporation. The dimensions of favor, wisdom, ease, open doors. Are we learning? Next scripture. In Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18, very simple and popular scripture, but I want us to read it together. Read it with conviction. Are you ready? One to read, please. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord had given me are for signs and wonders in Lagos, for signs and wonders in Nigeria. Hold on. For sign, mention the name of everywhere that you should be a sign and a wonder. For signs and wonders in the marketplace, signs and wonders in Europe, in America. It says, I and the children that the Lord had given me, we are for signs and for wonders. Please look up. You know what a sign is? The assignment of a sign, a signboard was designed to captivate your attention no matter how distracted you are. 
so they design a signboard intentionally they use all of the psychology all of light every there is usually heavy investments in signboards so that no matter how distracted you are it becomes too evident to ignore it but a sign never points you to itself it tells you you are closer to the location when you are headed to a place and you see a sign it says turn left finally you know you are almost there the bible says we are for signs that means by my design something should rise from my life that creation should not ignore me this is not about being arrogant the excellency of the design that God invested his artistry in my making and that if I allow myself to be so constructed I will carry a formation that will compel nations and kings to bear witness to the fact that this is truly a sign I and the children that the Lord had given me it says we are for signs and for wonders in Israel but I like the remaining part from who from the Lord of hosts we are not just signs that appeared running our own agenda we were sent by the king as signs the woman at the well left not just receiving a miracle she ran and she became a sign let me show you how signs work this was a known prostitute six men in her life five men the six not even being her husband and after an encounter with jesus the bible says she left her water the issue of fetching water she ran to the city so she had the potential to do that but not without an encounter the bible says she told everyone without thinking what they would think about her come see a man her witness was so compelling the people had to leave their businesses and say this woman we know her where did this courage suddenly come from come see a man that had told me everything that i ever done they did not come because they loved jesus they came because the sign was a sign indeed and when they came to jesus they had an opportunity to sit down with him and to discuss with him and here was their verdict now we believe not just because of you we have seen for ourselves that is the assignment of a sign that when you come from a family that is known for practicing witchcraft that nobody rises beyond certain levels and my God the Lord lifts you by engaging the mysteries that you have taught and by accessing the kinds of graces that will fall upon you this night that you move in a speed that no one can explain in one year in two years you command a level of financial dominion, territorial dominion, where your life becomes a Bible study manual that people can use your life to learn God and say, we've not seen him in this fashion. I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs now. When a sign stops pointing to the real object, it no longer becomes a sign. You see that this is the reason why before he sends you he makes you because the tendency for pride in the midst of result is there and all humans who are not worked on by God will fall victim so he walks upon you so that your will becomes to glorify him and when he invests so much of his glory and while the world is clapping for you you are unashamed you can point them and say i am only a sign come and see the one who sent me john said i am the voice of one crying he was not ashamed john chapter 1 and verse 6 there was a man sent from god i like that rendition the bible says his name was john there was a man sent from god his name was joshua selman there was a man a woman sent from god a businessman a businesswoman a politician a career person sent from god you only passed through the womb of your mother you were sent from god and the bible says his name was john the assignment is in verse 7 the bible says the same came for a witness that through the excellency of his witness men might believe do you believe all i've said so far so that we do not waste all the prayers and the impartation 
God is determined to make something out of you tonight that you have never been yet. He's, he's, he's a kind, is a version of you that is about to be unveiled. But it is important for you to understand that in the midst of the glory and the glitz and the glamour, remember my teaching, he's only decorating the signboard so that you will attract the world indeed and bring them to the king. King of my life, you are my own, and I live for you alone. King of my life, you have my own, and I lay my life for you. My heart is yours. My mind is yours. My will is yours. You're the king of my life. That is our creed in this kingdom. Everything belongs to you. So when you lift us up, it's so that the world can see us clearer. And then we draw them to you unashamedly and intentionally. We let them know that no man can do these things except God be with him. Listen, if you understand what I'm teaching you tonight, it's like you have officially signed the contract of being a sign and a wonder. It's not as if God cannot lift. I'm telling you, it's not as if God cannot bless. But most believers do not understand what it takes. You must have that orientation and that understanding that everything that revolves in the kingdom especially as touching your rising is so that you become a mirror it's called in theology the reflection principle the moon does not have a light of itself it is the degree to which it aligns to the sun that it shines so when you see the moon halfway that is not the true shape of the moon that is only the part of the moon that aligns to the sun the part of you that aligns to God is a part that the world will see shining for some of you, the moon is so small. You have been so misrepresented because of your disalignment. There is something called full moon where the moon aligns perfectly and it can make nights to even become like evening. Are we together? So all this petty pride that is destroying our generation should not even rise you see humility is not just a character trait humility is a revelation is the resultant effect of understanding what i'm teaching you because you see pride is rebellion it means number one you do not even know the king number one you don't know yourself number three you don't know your assignment you alone are god and i surrender I surrender that when God lifts you whilst you are holding the billions of naira and all of the money the temptation is that everybody will look at you and say I think there's a language we use in night blow <laughs> no. that's too small a reason for God to invest his integrity upon your life the ad that kind of agenda is too is too small but when it becomes that the nations must see your glory, now you are speaking the king's language. When you come to him and say, Lord, invest upon me the healing anointing. All right? What's the purpose for the healing anointing? Lord, I come from a family where nobody has looked. Uh, people have looked down on me and I want to cure that shame. Too small a reason for God to invest that healing anointing. But ladies and gentlemen, when you get to a point where you say, Lord, I know that in this end time you desire your healing power to reach the nations. Can you find a worthy vessel in me that becomes an extension of your possibilities to the nation? You are speaking the king's language. I'm teaching you how to speak to the king. For many years, a woman wanted a child. And the purpose of that child was simply to solve the mockery that was coming from her stepwife 
and you will think that because of that agenda God will respond it was not enough reason at all but the day she said Lord you are looking for a prophet I've changed my agenda I, I let's let's talk kingdom she prayed once and Samuel arrived let me tell you the truth lamentations out of pain and misery and kingdom driven prayers are two different things unfortunately most of us in the body of Christ invest hours praying the kind of prayer that is founded and garnished with selfishness and sometimes we make very nasty statements as if we forget that it's God we are talking to and we expect him to listen and then to answer All these prayers about mockery and the rest now I'm not I know that God will always prove a point in your life but sincerely I'm telling you how the king operates if there is anything that drives your passion other than to see him glorified forget about the investment of his power are we learning yes let me show you one more scripture Jesus John 14 verse 12 I'm just charging your hearts and we'll pray John 14 12 here's what Jesus said verily verily I say unto you who is speaking now Jesus himself the truth so there is no lie in what you are hearing he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also <laughs> and he says greater works than this shall he do fill my life till all they see is you Lord glorify listen to what I'm saying that's a prayer fill my life till all they see is you Glorify for all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for. When I started ministry, I never knew there was something called honorarium that a man preaches and you can put a basket of fruits and say, thank you, go and eat. I never knew that there was such a thing because that was never the drive. It's an honor to serve his majesty. You see that? Seeing souls saved, seeing lives transformed, that was it. Thank you, oh God, that every other thing that came as a fringe blessing was a surprise. For doing this, for serving you with all my heart, this is what you are doing. And when God finds that kind of heart, he says, you are doing this for me. Let's go to the next level. I hope God is speaking to someone. So that before you receive all this impartation and start running out and then just go and kill yourself for no reason. God is, there is a circumcision that God is doing in our hearts. Let me tell you, many people have failed God. They have failed God because they did not learn kingdom. They did not learn kingdom. When it has to do with kingdom, your name decreases. Let every other name fade away. That's the language of the kingdom. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Sing it one more time with conviction in your heart. Let every other name fade away. all those idols that have risen above the name of the Christ. Bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Jesus.
that's how it works in this kingdom there cannot be two kings in the same kingdom that's why he took us to this side of his kingdom he is the king of we kings here listen look at me the king understood this Darius and he made them to build a statue of himself 90 feet tall and he says there's only one king in Babylon if you hear the sound of the trumpet no matter who you are relinquish all your earthly duties you become a worshiper immediately and anyone who fails to worship you are a rebel i don't care how excellent your administrative skills are when it has to do with the issue of the king i don't want to know if you are the chief financier of babylon you must bow and there were four hebrew boys who said king we respect you but there is you don't know who sent us there is a conflict of dominion when it has to do with administration we will respect you when it has to do with our civil duties but as far as our allegiance is concerned your statue came too late there is a king he says our god would deliver us and the king watched and said this boys oh king we are not careful we are sent we respect you but there is a government that we have pledged our allegiance and there will be no negotiation and they they, they made the, the fiery furnace seven times to the extent the Bible records that those who threw them there were burned by the fire and they took them watch the jealousy of the king as soon as they arrived because the Bible says where two or three are gathered even if it's in fire provided two or three are gathered I am there in their midst gathered in the challenge gathered in church gathered in pain where two or three are gathered doesn't matter the location if it is in my name I will come and defend my name hallelujah and the king said were there not four men I hope you know that the, the fourth man would have been invisible but he became visible because there was a message to prove that just because you see me standing alone does not mean I am alone just because you are doing business alone does not mean you are alone and when occasion demands the one with you who stands by you like a mighty terrible one he reveals himself to the world they will see the difference between you and him they will know you are not alone hallelujah no you are not alone you are not doing business alone you are not in the office alone it looks like you are walking alone they see you alone but you are jealously guarded you were sent by the king you are an ambassador beyond an employee carry that mentality if I ask you who do you work for your first question is one bank or whatever and you are right but from an eternal standpoint you are very wrong hmm. the one who sent me ever before me before the bank saw you they only saw you because he sent you the corporation only saw you because he sent you they have discerned your value before he sent you so when they say go and you go back and, cry and say I am finished you insulted the one who originally sent you someone shout send. send one more time say send. send it's a mentality you must carry you may look ordinary but you were sent from god oh your parents said they finished giving birth it just happens that you came no god forced you there because there, there's an agenda that still had your name on it you see when you carry this mentality your orientation on many grounds begin to change your concept of rewards your concept of men your concept of love every your approach you live on earth like a foreigner even though you have tremendous influence over the people and the resources but there is something about your mind they know that your relationship is not connected to anything here because you are sent no matter how long the ambassador of us is in nigeria he knows us is not his home 
Yet you will see him driving convoys. Yet you will see him staying in the best of hotels. But he is eternally aware that I'm a U.S. citizen first. Sent on a mission. They name their mission after what sent them. And notice what happened. We had an incident recently, I was told, somewhere in the eastern part of the nation where, you know, there was an assault or so on U.S. citizens. And within moments, the Secretary of State had made a speech. That is kingdom. Who is touching the one I sent? And they say there's somebody, he, he has touched everybody in that family like that. And then God gives you a scripture to announce to that devil but I know whom I believed listen and I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which is committed to him not keep that which is available when you become that which is committed to him his jealousy now comes in place to defend you all that you have given me he says I have kept John 17 and none is lost except the son of partition and that that scripture might be fulfilled he's a keeper not just a maker so when he makes your business he keeps it so you can have longevity of impact there's no need to be afraid will I last 10 years no if you know the one who keeps you and your loyalty and your obedience and your surrenderedness is in check the dust will rise and fall you will still stand In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain